Well, hello. God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I'm blessed of the Lord, my friends, and highly favored, and I'm yet rejoicing off of the word of the Lord that God gave me to preach to you this past Sunday uh, from Matthew's gospel, chapter number 16, and where Jesus asked a question that was so important, because as we mentioned in the message, uh, our Lord was six months away from Calvary. And he knew that time was quickly running out. And it was, if you will, late in the evening. What the Lord wanted to know was, was there anyone in his camp amongst the men that he selected? Men who had no idea what was about to come, yet to come and about to take place. And yet the future of Christianity and the move of God in the earth uh, would rest upon the testimony and the revelation and the insight of at least one or all of these men. And Jesus asked a question. He wanted to know from the 12, who do men say that I am? And he went to uh, Caesarea Philippi. You know, uh, the fascinating thing, my friends, about the Bible, and we talked about this uh, this past Sunday, the fascinating thing about the Bible is when you, we're not told uh, uh, to read the Bible. We're told to study the Bible. People who, who read the Bible, you'll never understand the Bible just by reading it. You got to study it. And that's why I have, uh, with a degree of humor and, and at the same time, uh, wanting you to think, you know, some of the commercials, I don't see them as much now as I used to. They've kind of changed it as they would advertise, you know, reading the Bible at bedtime, a good Bible bedtime story that would put you to sleep. And uh, I've said many times, I don't think that's a good use of scripture. We don't, if, you, if you're having problems sleeping, pray to the God of the Bible and God will give his uh, well-beloved rest, as the scripture says. And if you need to take something, take it. But you don't want the scriptures to be your sleeping pill. Uh, the last thing you want to do is to associate, associate sleep with reading the Bible, which is the, which is the main thing too many of us do. We read the Bible and we fall asleep. Well, in, in, in giving these casual reading, casual readings, we miss the depth, the profundity of the scripture. Many times the thing that the story uh, is telling us when Jesus went to Caesarea Philippi and asked the question to his disciples, who do men say that I am? He did not make it easy for them to come up with the right answer for the backdrop of our Lord, the backdrop, what was across his shoulders as they looked at him standing there behind him was temples built to false gods that littered the mountainside. The mountainside was glistening with temples and things to the false god Pan and other gods. So what Jesus does is he stands in the midst of the backdrop of the gods of men, the false gods, but beautiful temples. And there our Lord stands. And at this time, my friends, our Lord had not translated, you know, uh, in chapter 17, he takes the disciples up on the Mount of Transfiguration and he transfigures and he glows like the sun and all of the glory that he had been holding in, he releases and, and, and it's such an amazing sight that Peter, James and John, uh, whom he, t he took with him uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration, they fell to the ground. They collapsed. They'd never seen anything like that before in their lives. Well, this this glory was still held within when Jesus stood in Caesar's town, uh, Philippi, Caesarea Philippi, and he asked the question, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And you know, uh, most of the people gave good answers, but they didn't give the correct answer. They gave uh, nice sounding answers, but the truth is they missed it by a mile because Jesus is more than John the Baptist. Jesus is greater than Jeremiah. Jesus uh, was more than a prophet. Jesus is our Lord. The Bible says about Jesus, said without him, was there not anything made that was made. 
You see, so Jesus is in a category all by himself. He wanted to know, did any of them recognize him for who he truly is? And I'm headed somewhere. And you know, uh, Peter, uh, who was the loudmouth of the group, and uh, oftentimes <laughs> he stuck his foot in his mouth, uh, but this time he got it right. He said to the Lord, Thou art the Messiah, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said, I'm not blinded by the clutter. I'm not thrown off by all of the temples that are uh, in the background there. I'm not thrown off by the glistening, the beautiful glistening temples and the, 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 the hillside and all of the things that could easily distract one's attention and, 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 and give the illusion that you're looking at something and someone that you're not. He says, no, none of those things move me. I know who you are. I recognize you. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus blessed him and said, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, Simon Jonah's son. For flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my father, which has revealed this unto you. My friends, I want to know, do you know who Jesus is? is? Is your view, opinion, conviction, conception, and belief when it comes to Christ, is it still as sincere? Is it still as pure? Are you still as sure as you were before 2020, 2021, before the COVID outbreak, before BLM, before critical race theory, before all of the social unrest, before the police shootings, before all of the uh, 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 the pillaging that have taken place in our country, all of the protests where uh, buildings and businesses were burned to the ground before what took place on January the 6th at the Capitol building, before all of this, the hoopla that, uh, and in the midst of all of these things, do you still know who Jesus is? Or have your opinion of Christ been skewed? Are you, do you question whether or not now Jesus is yet Lord to the glory of God the Father? To my brothers and sisters who are African American who love Jesus Christ, do you still believe that Jesus is the only Savior? Uh, or, or have some of these other teachings gotten to you where you question the validity of of the Bible and you question the validity of the name of Jesus and you you uh, are you have you returned home my my black brothers and sisters my white brothers and sisters my fellow Americans young folk who are watching this have you come home and said after uh, being uh, in school for, for a little while and and hearing some new things and hearing some uh, uh, some teachings that conflict or have objections uh, with regards to biblical Christianity, are you now coming home saying to your parents, mom and dad, I no longer believe, or mom and dad, I have questions about Jesus. I'm not quite sure. Where do you stand? I want you to know, my friends, listen, if you stay in the word of God, and if you stay on your knees, you'll be just like me and so many others who are able to, at a glance, recognize that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father and that Jesus is still in control. I have not traded in my Bible, my B-I-B-L-E, for the CDC. I do not trust CNN, MSNBC, Fox, 
ABC, CBS, NBC, Spectrum News, the local news, the national networks, the cable networks. I do not trust the talking heads that I see on television more than I trust the scripture. I still believe with all of my heart that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I trust the God of the Bible with my very existence. I trust the God of the Bible, his uh, account for how all things have come into existence. Because let me tell you, my friends, if the devil can get you to doubt God, uh, when it comes down to our very existence, if you don't believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 and 1, if you don't believe that, how on earth are you going to believe uh, all of the other things that follow from the book of Genesis, from Exodus through Revelation? Yes, God made the heavens and the earth. Yes, I still believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe that Mary was a virgin, not virgin as in young lady, but virgin as in a woman who had never been touched by a man sexually. I believe the, Bible, the biblical account of how the angel Gabriel spoke to her. I believe how the angel spoke to Joseph and told Joseph, don't you doubt her. She's telling you the truth. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou, I'm going to give you name and rights, Joseph, thou shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I believe it. I believe that Jesus Christ lived the sinless life. I believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins. I don't believe that he merely passed out. He didn't just faint, but he actually died. And, uh, and he rose again, and the resurrection three days later was not a spiritual res resurrection. No, he physically got up from the grave. God the Father raised him from the dead. And, and that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe this. And the day will come when Jesus Christ will come back uh, in the form of the rapture where we will meet him in the sky. But then there's a second coming that will take place. And I believe all these things. I believe it with all of my heart. And none of the things that I've seen in this world. And I'll tell you, sometimes you have to turn the television off. Sometimes you have to change the channel. You got men oh, uh, uh, trying to change themselves into women. Sports Illustrated, you ought to be ashamed of yourself putting a man on the cover. And uh, someone uh, uh, put in a comment that it was a great day for women. Well, how in the world can it be a great day for women when Sports Illustrated puts a man on the cover uh, they call it trans man, but ain't no trans nothing. That's a man. The, the DNA don't lie. That's a man. That's a man. It, it's nothing but a man. And any woman who salutes being replaced by a man, uh, you need to have your head examined. I'm not going to uh, adopt uh, these terms, uh, Brother Gary, that we've come up with, like biological male, biological female. So you're biological this, but you're actually something else. Now, you know you said that. You know that makes no sense. It sounds smart, but it's dumb. God made them male and God made them female, and I believe it. When I see these things, none of these things shake my faith in the Bible. I, when I hear uh, people uh, talking about uh, defunding the police and all that stuff, I still believe what the Bible says about the sons of men and how their hearts are fully set to do evil because sentence against an evil work is not speedily carried out. I also believe where there are rogue cops, where there are people who abuse the system, where there are people who do wrong, then that individual should be dealt with. But I am not on the side of defunding uh, the police. And, and I've heard some politicians say, well, to get rid of policing altogether. Well, that person's crazy. 
I do believe that uh, it's necessary to have borders because the Bible teaches that God is the one who determined the boundaries for people and set men where they are. I'm bringing this to a c- conclusion tonight. I'm, I'm here to invite you to service tonight, but I wanted to talk to you just for a few minutes to say to you, I want to encourage you in the Lord and encourage you in the faith and to say to you, keep your faith. Keep keep faith in the God of the Bible. Keep your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's Lord. He's coming again. He knows what's going on. He knows where you are. And if there's someone today you're shaken, he knows how to strengthen you. If you're hurting, he knows how to comfort you. Oh, my. If you're in the valley of indecision, he knows how to show you uh, the right way. No matter where you are, my friends, Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. And Jesus Christ uh, is here to deliver you from your sins. The refuge is the word of God. The refuge that you seek is the church. Let's get in, get in the Bible. Get into a Bible-believing church. Get, get your pens out. Take notes. Because I'm telling you, he is the Christ, the son of the living God. And he is coming back again. I want to invite you to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight. We're going to have an awesome time at the church. And I, my friends, I want to just tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate you. And the God of the Bible is going to bless us real good. Now, you make it a great day and join us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. The word of God is going to be preached. The word of God is going to be taught. The word of God is going to be delivered. And you are going to say, amen. God bless.